So these are fresh ashwagandha roots. They kind of look like white carrots. Um, the tops are chopped off. Just, just a little piece of wood, a little hatchet, just chop off the tops. That's how it happens. They're pulled, they're chopped, then they're ready to be washed in clean, pure water and dried in the sun. Um, one of the things that I, I fight for with as many projects as I can is for benefit sharing. Uh, if a company derives a medicinal plant from a group of people and makes a lot of money on it, then I believe there's a responsibility to share those benefits with the people who did the hard back-breaking labor out in the hot sun. That only makes sense. In this instance, uh, community schools, medicine, uh, private business initiatives are all supported by revenues from this. I mentioned yesterday I've been involved in a free dental boat, a free internet cafe at 15,000 feet in the Andes Mountains of Peru, um, helping to rebuild schools, build toilet facilities, helping to establish maternity clinics, basic stuff. Uh, and all these things can be accomplished rather easily, actually. It's not complex. You just have to show up and do the work. So in this instance, uh, revenues from this particular extract go back to the community. That helps the community to flourish. It also creates, naturally creates a certain amount of loyalty. Ayurveda, because it is a primary healthcare system that is highly revered in India, has its own national center in Jaipur, India. Jaipur is known as the pink city. Anybody been to Jaipur? Okay, a couple people. You know there are these pink palaces there. It's really very, very cool. It's sort of old India, if you will, because so much of India today is like any other city. Modern skyscrapers, lots of traffic, people driving like insane people. It's just almost like Chicago. Um, so, so this is the National Institute of Ayurveda. I talked with health experts there. There's been some attempt in the natural products industry to include above ground parts of the plants, which hasn't been done in 4,000 years. Um, they're very adamant at the National Center of Ayurveda that that's not okay, that only the root is to be used. And the American Botanical Council came out with a very strong adulteration bulletin uh, insisting that if ashwagandha is to be a legitimate product, then it has to be root only. And I show you that because there's always constant conflict and competitive strife in every business, in every endeavor that involves money, and is no different in the herbal scene. Uh, it may surprise you that, that herbal extraction is a monster industrial activity. I just finished up a few years ago, 21 years with a company that has 15 extraction facilities around the world. And when they extract an herb, they do 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 tons at a time. This is big business, folks. And it needs to be done correctly, and it needs to be done right. And so high-tech stainless steel extraction methods basically garnered from the pharmaceutical industry are part and parcel of making good, clean, self, healthy, effective, you know, herbal concentrations that always have the same level of active principles. Uh, extensive clinical studies. I'm going to just briefly go through this. Uh, we have human studies on anxiety, on sexual function, on cardiorespiratory performance. That's VO2 max, by the way, for you athletes out there. And we see among non-professional athletes as much as an almost 6% increase in VO2 max, which is completely off the board and unexpected. But we do see that. We see actually improved strength in muscle uh, size and muscle strength, uh, improved energy. And I asked some um, researchers who were about to do a human clinical study, uh, I believe it was actually the sleep study, and I said, listen, I'm curious to know if people are happier. I want you to ask some questions around if they're happier after the, the test period, which I think was 90 days. And uh, the guy who was doing the study design said, hey, that's kind of a great idea. So they did ask a series of questions, same questions that would be asked in psychiatric evaluations or counseling evaluations. And what they found was that, indeed, after 90 days, people were happier. They were less stressed out. They had more mental clarity. They were sh more sharp in focus. They got up feeling better. They slept better. They had uh, improvements in their sex lives. So the bottom line with this is that ashwagandha proves to be very, very valuable. It proves to be tremendously safe. And I would encourage you all 
to give this a try if any of the benefits at all seem like they could be right for you.